Welcome, MGM Grand Garden Arena, Steve Harvey Grand Finale! Sold out show. 27 years ends tonight. Steve asked for a special individual to inter introduce his lifetime achievement video. This young man was born and raised in Birmingham, Alabama. Over 20 years in the comedy game. Appeared on Def Jam, Comic View, Showtime at the Apollo, Friday after next, and he's the host of his own morning show, the Ricky Smiley Radio Show. Most known for his outrageous prank phone calls and characters like Lil Daryl and Bernice Jenkins. And you can catch him this fall on TV One, the Ricky Smiley Show. Please welcome to the stage the one and only Ricky Smiley! What's up, y'all? Y'all need to make some noise and hip on my man Steve Harvey. What's up? One time for Steve Harvey, what's up? I'm excited, are you excited? Y'all ready to laugh tonight? Big brother finna put it down, man. I'm excited to be here. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he asked me to come. And uh, let me just tell you my testimony. It, it just probably wouldn't be no Ricky Smile if it weren't for Steve Harvey. Came to the comedy club in Birmingham, Alabama in 90. That's when we met. And uh, I was opening up for Steve and had on a jogging suit. Steve sent me home and said, you on the show with, you on the show with Steve Harvey. You need to go home. and put on the suit. So Steve had did his show while he was performing. I ran back to my apartment, came right back. And by the time he said, thank you, good night, I had that suit on. And he said he had love for me ever since then because he knew I was serious about my business. And this brother taught me a lot of stuff. And one thing I learned about Steve and just learned about life, nobody on this earth have to do anything for you. You know what I mean? That man took me under his wing got me my radio show and got me started let me open up for the kings of comedy he's been a frat brother he's been a big brother he's been a friend and i've been a friend to him and friendship is essential to the soul that's what we do omega sci-fi fraternity incorporated uh, uh. hey y'all ready to do this thing y'all better get y'all better give my man some energy tonight yes sir this is a celebration. This is a legacy right here. My man, Steve Harvey, y'all. So listen, this is what we finna do. All right, I want y'all to take a look at this Lifetime Achievement video from my friend, Steve Harvey, y'all. One time, one more time, y'all. Thank you. I'm out there, man, trying to make those people, minus the titles and, and minus the cameras and minus where we are and forget the competition, man. I'm going out to make people laugh, that's all, man. If I do me, I'll be fine. If I go out here trying to impress some folks, I'm in trouble, man. I got to impress nobody. I'm just do Steve Harvey, man. I'm funny. I'm going to be funny. If I don't be nothing else, I'm going to be funny. That's the deal, ain't it?
I think OJ killed everybody in that goddamn driveway. Somebody say they found a Heisman Trophy in the bushes. And now I go on in there, but I tell you what, better not be for what I think it is. Say I'm fine. Say it. Say it, Tom. Say it. I kill your kids. I kill your kids. I kill your kids, Tom. I kill your kids. Give me a check. Give me my check. Give me a check. Give me my check. Y'all tripping with me like Christians ain't sexy. Let me ask y'all something. If Christians ain't sexy, where all these little Christians keep coming from? Just in my imagination of the ultimate introduction, that if I had the chance to bring out Jesus, give a damn if you got to get up and use the corner of the bathroom door and lean your ass on that door seal and slide. Somebody gonna wipe your ass, but it ain't gonna be me. Make the necessary adjustments. This ain't the radio show. Las Vegas, Nevada, show your love. Y'all do better than that. I said, show your love. Before I get started, I never start anything without first of all saying God is everything to me. If it wasn't for God, I never ever would have made it. Well, now that we got that out the way, how y'all doing with y'all country ass? Oh yeah, man oh man oh man. Sold out, MGM Grand, Las Vegas, Nevada. I sure appreciate y'all coming. Man, boy, this is how you go out. I, I, I sure appreciate y'all. This is how you go out. We got some laughing to do tonight, though. Might well go on and get it started right now. Let's get a couple things out the way. Uh, first of all, I know it's been a lot of controversy because I'm a Christian now. And a lot of people been working it out in their mind, you know, how Steve doing. I'm still wrestling with a couple things, trying to get through. He ain't through with me yet. I've been working on the cussing. I've been trying to get the cussing out, but the shit ain't worked out for me. I'm going to just have to be real with you. I done tried it, but the shit is not working out for me. I don't, I don't know what else to do. I have tried to stop cussing. I, don't, I just don't, I can't find no substitute words. I don't know what else to say. What do you, I, I don't know nobody don't cuss. How many of y'all in here don't cuss? Raise your hand if you don't cuss. See right there, just a damn lie. How 
how you live your life without cussing. See, you, see what I don't understand about cussing? There are just cuss-appropriate moments. There are some moments in your life where only cussing will do. All right, since we don't know what I'm acting like I'm talking about here, here let, let's, let's go down the list of a couple things that didn't happened in your life. What do you say? You get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and you jam your toe on the edge of that door. What do you say? Oh, oh, Father. Oh, Lord. It's not what you say. Oh, shit. This son of a bitch. Who left that fucking door open? When a five to some bitch and left the door, I'm beating your ass in the morning. I got another one. What about your kids? You don't cuss at your kids? Well, if you don't, I recommend it. Please, please listen to me. Start cussing at your kids. You get a better reaction from your kids when you cuss at them. Because sometimes that don't... You ever had your little baby just jumping up on the couch? Just jumping on the couch. Come on now, baby. Mama say get down. Steady jumping. Come on, baby. Mama say get down. Steady jump. Right there. You take the right adjective and you interject it into that sentence and you get a quicker result. All that, come on baby, mama say get out. Get your black ass down off that damn couch. And if you white, use the same line. Get your black ass off of the couch. It's very effective. You gonna have to send your kids to therapy after that, but try it at the house. How about another one? about your beloved child, the baby, the one you carried for nine months, that the one you went through all the, pre who, who made this cord right here? I was born with more cord than this here. What about that, the baby, the one you carried in your, went to prenatal care, rubbed the cocoa butter on your stomach, trying to stop them stretch marks, the one you took all the vitamins for, the one you asked the Lord for, give you 10 fingers, 10 toes, that one right there. You're in the grocery store with him, and you let him push the grocery cart, and he take that cart and run it up on the back of your leg. What do you say? Oh, you black son of a bitch. No, you didn't. You little fucker, you let me just, Come here, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. That ain't your real daddy either. Cause see, I've been trying to figure it out too. Where did cussing come from? Where did cussing come from? It ain't start with me. You know I have a theory. I think cussing started back with Moses. Now, listen to me. I don't think Moses cussed. I really don't. But the people around Moses, they ass was cussing. They had to, because Moses was doing some tripped out stuff. You saw the movie? Moses had that stick, called it a staff, threw it on the floor, it turned into a snake. You know, good way of black people, oh shit, a snake! That son of a bitch made a snake! Then he took that same staff when he was leading the slaves running from Pharaoh across the desert, took that same stick, stuck it out over the sea and parted the waters. You know, good and well, they were standing there going, now this is some bullshit right here. <laughs> Ain't no way in hell I'm going out in all that water right there. I can't swim, Moses. Man, shit, I'm gonna go on back and be a slave, dog. I, I was real cool over there. And then, and then that big one. You remember that big miracle where they had them 5,000 people and they fed them? They ain't had but two fish and five loaves of bread. You know, good and well. <laughs> it was some people at the end of that line. No good and hell well, ain't gonna be no fish when we get up here. 
See, now listen to me. I know y'all ain't never been on TV before, but what you ain't finna do, you ain't finna half-ass laugh at me. <laughs> now, just cause you done got your ass on TV for the first time, that ain't none of my damn problem. You need to dig on in here. This the last one. You waiting on the jokes to come later on. Damn it, this it. Get your ass involved in this show and act like you seeing the king for the last time. Sitting up in here picking and choosing the shit you gonna laugh at. All this shit funny. I've been having people laugh all my damn career. Now you sitting in here chuckling and shit cause you on TV and had some shit in layaway for months and months. <laughs> sitting up here, I want that good ass laugh. That holler, that hold your ah, ah, ah. Sitting up in here, y'all trying to work it out. Cause I got a lot of stuff on my mind, I gotta get up. And see, let me tell you something. You know what I'm gonna miss the most about stand up? Cause see, when I'm out here, I get to say what's really on my mind. I ain't got to fix it. You know, on the radio, I can't say what I want to say cause we got sponsors. Well, they ain't here tonight. And it's some shit I've been wanting to say that I can't say. That's what you paid your money for tonight, so here it go. Now let's go and get this out the way. Let me tell you something. Was y'all as mad as I was when that ignorant bastard went in that movie theater and shot all them innocent people? You son of a bitch. I can't stand people like that. Look, man, if your life funky, kill your damn self. Walk your ass in your garage and shoot your sorry ass. What is you shooting all these other people for? We ain't done shit to you. Now, you can't even get a family member to go to a movie without something happening to them. This bastard made me sick. You know what killed me about these people? Every time you catch their ass, all of a sudden, they play crazy and don't remember shit. Oh, you can roll the tape for them. You can show them the news clips. They play crazy and don't remember a damn thing. Oh, really? See, right there? See, we're gonna have to stop this here. Shit, now. Nah. All these copycat murders and all this. This is how you put a stop to this shit. Now, listen to me. I know we can't torture people. I know they don't want us waterboarding and all that. But listen to me, there's something that still works. If we could just give them a good old fashioned ass whooping. <laughs> Whoop they ass. See, that's different from torture. Torture is when somebody hold you and you can't do shit. Or ass whooping is you can fight back, but the whole time you fighting, you know you losing. That's, that's what the ass whooping I want. And then what I think we ought to do in America to put a stop to this here. We ought to form an ass whooping committee. I just need six volunteers to just go. I just need six. I just, you can't ask black people to go whoop ass. It, I just need six, that's too many. I just need six. Cause see, boy, we just trying to jar their memory. We ain't trying to kill them. I just need six people. And this is how you do it. See, put the dude that did the shit in a room, just a medium-sized room, we're gonna need some space. And this is how I want you to do it. Me and the ass kicking committee, we walk in the room, it's six of us. We got a video camera. We walk in and we ask them, excuse me, do you remember what happened? <laughs> no, no, I don't, no, no, I, I have no idea. Okay, fine. We take that video camera, set it up in the corner, as soon as I cut it on, we commence to kicking they ass. I'm talking about pop, pop, that nice shit. Get involved in it. But just for five minutes, because we ain't trying to kill them, we just trying to jot their memory. Soon as we whoop their ass, cut the camera off, leave the room. Next day, same time, same six people walk back in that room. Now when he see us, if he don't flinch, that motherfucker really don't remember shit. <laughs> we, we, we're dealing with somebody who really don't remember shit now. Then we ask him, do you remember what happened? No, no I don't. 
Take that camera, put it in the corner, and click it. This time when we whoop it ass, we need to put a project ass whooping on it. Once he fall, you can start to start motherfucking son of a bitch. We gon' motherfucking put your shoe in his ass. Wipe it off. Stick it back in there. That type of ass whooping. About 15 minutes of that. Stop, cut the camera off, leave the room. Now this is the third day. I promise you, when we walk in that room the next day, when he see us, that's something for <laughs> He gonna start urinating the shit on himself, sitting in the floor. Then you can start questioning. Sir, do you remember what happened? Of course I do. what I want to do. I love you too. I'll tell you something else. Being a Christian hard. <laughs> Christian got too many rules. We already got Ten Commandments. I ain't even got all them. On a good day, I'm seven out of ten. But we got extra rules. Now, we, to be a Christian, you ain't supposed to lie. How you gonna be a Christian without lying? You can't tell people everything you think. You cannot tell people everything that's on your mind. You ain't gonna have no damn friends. You got to lie. It's like this here. It's like I got a, I got a partner. We gave him a nickname we were growing up. His name, Ugg. Cause, cause he ugly. See, notice about black people. We give you a nickname that's directly related to some shit that's wrong with you. You ain't got to guess. I got a partner named Onion Arm. Cause he stink. Every time you see him, he just moving. I got a partner named Blinky. We call him Blinky cause when he was little, he got shot in the eye with a BB gun. Now he's 55, and his eye just be leaking. He be dabbing it all the time. We be calling him blinking. He know what's up. I got another partner nicknamed Zach. Zach. We call him Zach because his breath smells exactly like the crack of his ass. <laughs> so now, about five years ago, Ugg came to one of my shows. Now, I ain't seen Ugg in about 20 years. And it was a crowd of people, I signed us some autograph. He just jumped out. He said, Steve, remember me? And hell yeah, I remember you. Cause this son of a bitch was just as ugly as he was when we was kids. And he had aged too, so you know when you get older, that age set in on your ass and your ugly ass really get some turns going on you. So he was kind of toe up. And I say, Ugg, oh, what's up? And I genuinely was happy to see him. We hugged and stuff. I say, Ugg, oh, what's been going on, man? Man, everything, Steve, everything. I said, yeah, what you been doing? Hey, Steve, you ain't gonna believe this. I just got mad. <laughs> now, I'm trying to work in my mind. Who didn't marry? this ugly ass dude. Cause you got to wake up every morning with a motherfucker that's, that's that ugly. This shit is wrong now. And then I was scared to meet his wife cause she can't be all that. See, most men marry up. Most men, like I look around the room, all y'all sitting next to a woman that's more attractive than you. That's the objective. You want a woman that's more attractive than you. If you and your woman resemble each other, you have made a terrible ass mistake. This shit will haunt you till you die. You're going to get a divorce. Listen to me. You are going to get a divorce. So, Ugg say, hey man, she went to the bathroom. She be right back. And I said, damn, 
because I have trying to fix myself because I have a tendency to say whatever on my mind. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to say when I see this woman. And sure enough, when she came out there, man, Jesus, this heifer was shot. And I looked at her, and she was cuter than Ugg, but just a little bit. It just a little bit. And when it saw her, she said, hey, man, this is my wife. It fucked me up. I said, mm. You know how you had that little quiet moment? Mm. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Jesus. You just let me. Jesus. Lord Jesus. You could. Mm. Mm -hmm. But it really ain't, uh, you know, nothing negative. Because, you know. And so I said, hey, man, pleasure to meet you, ma'am. I said, hey, man, why don't y'all come by the hotel and let's talk, chop it up. Because, you know, I want to see my boy. I ain't seen him in a long time. I love seeing cats that I come up with. He said, man, I got another surprise for you. I said, what you got, up? He said, man, we just had a baby. I said, see, now this is some bullshit right here. Because ain't no way in hell these two people need to be reproducing. What you need to do is go somewhere, you get clipped, she get them tubes tied up. Let's shut this process down. We can't pass these genes on to no damn body else. So I know the baby gonna be shot. He said, man, I'm gonna bring the baby by the hotel so you can meet him. Now I'm at the hotel, I'm in the lobby, and I'm just pacing, because I don't know what the hell, I don't know what I'm gonna say. Because shit, I ain't supposed to lie, but it ain't no way in hell I'm going to be able to hide my feelings because I have a tendency of saying what I think. And they came to the lobby, and it was cold outside, so I had the baby covered up. So I said, cool. I just kept talking, you know, trying to move the shit along. You know, maybe they're going to forget, you know, that they got the baby with them. I was just talking about everything, anything. Please just don't show me this baby. And that damn Ugg said, man, man, let me show you my son. And I kid you not, he pulled the blanket back and the baby fucked me up so bad that it took my breath away. I actually said, <laughs> I couldn't help. <I> <laughs> he said, boy, I look at him. He said, man, what you think? I said, shit, I can just say the only thing I can think of. I said, boy, what if boy look just like you? All right, now, let me tell you something. Since we ain't supposed to lie, can I just be real with you? Can I be real with you? Something I've always wanted to say out loud. When I go to church, I'm just going to be real. When I go, I don't really like the old people choir. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I really, I really, really don't understand why they still singing. <laughs> now you can look here, cause you have a See, I don't get to go that much, but when I go, you ever got your Sundays mixed up? You thought it was the young people choir, and it was day week, and you bust through the door, and you go, and you look up there, and you see they old ass, you go, oh, hell no. This is some bullshit right here. Why is they old ass up here? Half of them done forgot it's day Sunday. Ain't but three of them got robes on. Four of them got prayer caps on. One of them got a wig on sideways. Got the sideburn in the front. They swaying, just bumping all into each other. Then there's always one of them that's more jazzy than the rest of them. Now, a lot of y'all ain't laughing right now.
Cause your mama in that choir? <laughs> but that ain't got nothing to do with the joke I wrote. And they, they you know, why, why they still singing out them books? You 95 years old. These the same songs we didn't had since we were slaves. How you don't know the words to these songs yet? Now they all on the wrong page. They mixing hymns together. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the blood, the blood of the Lamb. Jesus will fix it. Jesus will fix it. And now I am happy all the day. <laughs> Tell you something else I don't like about the old people choir. Y'all ready for this here? They need some rules. Here go the rule they need to implement at churches all over the country. If you have been on the sick and shut-in list more than eight months, you can't just come get back in the choir. You need to complete your rehab before you come back in the choir. Always some old man been out on the sickest shut-in list eight months, then had a stroke. Whole left side shut down. Now he can only sway to one side. They already bumping into each other. No! I got something for y'all tonight. I'll tell you something else, too. This is right here. You really, really want to see how good a Christian you are? You want to test your faith? See how close you are, really, to the Lord? Go down to the DMV. Yeah. Oh, they got something for you down there. These is the funkiest damn employees ever gathered under one building. I don't know what the qualifications for being a DMV employee is, but you cannot like members of the human race. You must have an overall fucked up disposition about everything, and you pretty much know you ain't shit, and you want everybody else to feel it. Welcome to the DMV. Because when you go down there, you got to get tested. Now, I had a recent experience at the DMV. I had to go down there this year because my license had expired on my birthday and I lost them. Now, when you lose your license and they expire, I don't give a damn who you are. You got to come on down here. <laughs> now, we need a new picture, everything. You got to come down here. They don't care who you are. So I ain't been to DMV in years. I got people now. <laughs> Go down there and give me some light. 
Come on, y'all been doing it 27 years. Don't I, I ain't finna tell y'all I'm poor now. Listen to me. I got people. Go down there, give me some light. Come on down here. <laughs> so I had to go this time. So I ain't been a long time. I said, I'm gonna go when hardly ain't nobody there. So I waited till I got off the air at 10 o'clock one day and I went down to the DMV. That son of a bitch was packed. You couldn't park. I damn near had to park across the street. And let me tell you something. It's a different kind of person that's in the DMV at 10 o'clock because ain't none of them people working. They ass ain't got jobs. That's a different kind of person. And boy, I messed around and went by myself. You know, just trying to keep it real. You know, stupidest shit I ever did. I walked in there, and you know, as soon as I walked in, here this one dude came up and said, ah, hell no. Look who at the DMV. Motherfucking Steve Harvey. What you doing down here with us, man? I said, hey, man, listen, <laughs> you know, <laughs> my license expired and I lost it, so I had to come down here. <laughs> man, so you just down here with us? What you come down here for? You ain't got no people? <laughs> I said, yeah, I got people, man, but you know, when you lose it and it expires, you got to come down here. Oh, man, I thought you was something. You ain't shit. Man, I said, hey, man, listen to me. When you lose your license and expire, you got to come down here. Hey, motherfucker, Denzel ain't never been down here. <laughs> so it get worse. You know, everybody got a phone camera now. All them unemployed people, I don't know where they got phone money from, but they ass got a phone camera. It's amazing how people ain't got no job, got all techno shit. Wait, how you paying for this damn phone? So this woman comes up to me and asks for a picture, and I couldn't start posing for pictures because I had to take a picture with everybody. So I told the lady, I said, hey, look, all I want you to do is just, just take a picture. Uh-uh, this little crackhead, see, Listen to me, I know a crackhead when I see one. This one was on crack. Her ass wasn't but about this tall, and this was her right here. This her. This her. She done smoked herself down to damn near nothing. This was her skinny crackhead ass. And I need a picture with you, and she, I don't want to take no damn picture. So I'm standing there talking. She done slid her ass right up under me. I don't even know it. So I put my hand in my pocket, and I was talking to some people, and she just down there just squirming and shit. You choking me, you choking me. I ain't even know her little fuck ass was down there. I'm choking the shit out the woman. I said, oh shit, I'm sorry, baby. I didn't see And she had an odor. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, this woman was so goddamn strong. She was unbelievable. So I took the picture with a little funky ass. And then I'm going up to the line, and I get right up on the line. Now, I'm about, <laughs> I'm about three people back. So everybody, about 14 windows, everybody funky. They're all of them. Everybody at the window nasty, talking to people, crazy. But it was one woman that was way more nasty than the rest of them. It was just right here. Her ass was extra funky. Her stank ass should have just killed herself long time ago. Why she's still working with public, I don't even understand. So, you know, being a new Christian, somebody had told me, they say, Steve, what you gotta do is, you gotta take everything to the Lord in prayer. So I figured this is a good time. Cause I'm gonna need him now, cause I done had enough of the crackhead. Steve, you ain't shit, no, you done had enough of that. So I started talking to the Lord, I said, dear Lord, you know the day I'm having. You know the trouble I've been through. I'm asking you if you would just do one thing for me, if you will, please, just don't give me her. <laughs> if you could do that for me, 
I'm asking all these things in his name. Amen. Amen. So I figure, cool, soon as I get up on the line, I'm next. A guy over here got finished. I said, cool, I'm walking that way. The lady took her sign and flipped clothes over. I went right back over here. Soon as I got here, that helper said, next, please. <laughs> All right, now, I already talked to you. So I go up there. She said, uh, how you doing today? And it kind of threw me off. So I said, I'm doing fine. Thank you, ma'am. Mm-hmm. So you know, on the back of the driver's license, they got a question, they say, do you want to be an organ donor? So I just check no, because I don't want to be no damn organ donor. <laughs> you want to give your shit away? Go ahead. I don't want to be no damn organ donor. I ain't giving away a damn thing. Feel how you want to feel. Oh, Steve, that ain't right. Hey, kiss my ass. I'm not giving away nothing. All this going with me, uh, hopefully I'm going to heaven. I'm going to need all this here. So now she looks over there. She flip it over. She said, would you like to be an organ donor? I said, well, damn. I said uh, no, thank you, ma'am. I said, would you like to be an organ donor? Now, I didn't check no on the damn paper. So now I'm really trying to figure out why she's still talking to me about this damn giving up shit, because I'm not giving away a damn thing. So I looked over on the paper, I said, I checked now on the block. She said, well, seems mighty selfish of you. <laughs> now, I should have let it go right there. But since I'm a new Christian, I ain't good at all the rules yet. I said, I don't want to give away nothing. She said, well, I recognize you. You're on the radio every day telling the people, just lying to people about the Lord. Now you don't want to help nobody. I said, hold on, what that got to do with me giving away a damn kidney or something? I ain't giving away shit. So, well, you know, you, you don't know if you need a kidney. You might not need a kidney when you get to heaven. I said, how you know, you been? <laughs> See, people kill me. See, you got them Christians with all that extra rule. Now, where in the Bible do it say I got to give away my organs? It ain't in there. That's a rule they created. I'm not giving away nothing, because just in case, I make it to heaven, and I get up there. I done heard about these streets of gold and all that. Maybe they got bathrooms made out of gold. I want to stand there and urinate like everybody else. I done gave my damn kidney away. Now, I'm upstairs. They having a big concert downstairs. Mahalia Jackson, James Cleveland, Whitney going to be doing a solo. They got Andre Crouch. Everybody down there singing. I can't go because I'm upstairs on dialysis. <laughs> Sitting up in here all of a sudden, all of a sudden. And I get down there and all of a sudden I hear somebody go, here come Jesus. Now I done gave my eyes away. Been waiting all my life to see Jesus. Here comes Jesus. Where? Where at? Where is Jesus? I'm the only one standing up there with some glasses on and got a dog. Jesus, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? And then I'm sitting up here, and, the, and, the, and then I'm sitting up here. I done looked at that picture all my life. You seen that picture of the Last Supper? with all the disciples sitting there. I've been dreaming of the day when I'm sitting at the table eating with my Lord and Savior. Now, I ain't got no eyes. I don't even know if I'm at the table. They got me over there at the table eating with the kids. Everybody eating lamb chops and ham and all this here. I got a bowl of oatmeal because I gave my damn teeth away. Sitting over there, glasses cocked to one side because I done gave an ear to some asshole.
And then the real reason I want to go to heaven, because my mama said, boy, I'll see you in heaven one day. Now I'm down there, and all of a sudden I hear mama, Steve? Mama? Steve? Mama, is that you? Roo, roo. Shut up, boy. Steve? Mama, is that you? Roo, roo. Go find mama, boy. Go find mama. Then it be my damn luck. I run up into that heifer from the DMV. I see you made it. Sick of boy. Sick, 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 sick. I tell you, one of the big career moves that happened to me, I started hosting Family Feud. Oh, uh, that was so major for me. That was God doing stuff I ain't know nothing about. And uh, this is a lot going on that show y'all don't get to see. But I'm finna tell you something. We didn't already take the upcoming season there's a family that's coming on the show this fall, and I'm really trying to get Family Feud not to air this family. <laughs> this was the stupidest, <laughs> ignorantest group of people I've ever fucking seen. <laughs> All of them in the same family. You know why I want them to add it? Because they're black. <laughs> Tell you right now. They put these black people on TV, they gonna set us back about 200 years. <laughs> these people, Lord Jesus, I ain't never seen a family more ignorant. They asked, first of all, the man, wife, was the loudest woman I've ever spoke to in my life. I said, ma'am, how you doing today? I'm doing good, Steve! And I'm going, has anybody told this heifer that we got mics in here? <laughs> She's standing there, and next to her was their daughter. She was tall. They from the hood. She way overdressed for family feud. <laughs> Spaghetti strap top, long chandelier earrings. Where is your ghetto ass going? <laughs> so I'm going down the line to meet them, and I look at her name tag, and her name tag said Pumpkin. So I thought it was a mistake. I said, excuse me, man, what's your name? Pumpkin? I said, Pumpkin? She moved that earring out the way. It was spelled P-U-N-K-I-N. I said, baby, Pumpkin? Who called you Pumpkin? My daddy called me Pumpkin. I said, but don't you mean Pumpkin? You know, pumpkin, P-U-M-P-K-I-N. She said, uh-uh, pumpkin, like Halloween. <laughs> oh, she get worse. I ain't through. So she goes up to the challenge round. You know where you hit the buzzer? She got a hand behind her back. The question was, <laughs> name a word or phrase that begins with pork. She hit the button. I said pumpkin. Loud! I said, excuse me? Loud! I said, loud? Ah, oh, Steve, loud! You know, like a pork loin. I said loin. She said, "Yeah, L I O N." Lion. Oh, brother, did you just spell lion? That ain't goddamn loin. L I O N. That is not loin. 
Okay, put these people on TV. Please, Jesus. Lose the tape. Oh, it get worse. <laughs> I ain't through. So she wins the challenge. Pork loin was like number two. I go over to her brother. Now her brother, 29 years old, he a rapper. You know, ain't nobody never heard of this, mama. You, if you're 29 and still rapping and ain't nobody heard of your ass, it's time to go and get a job. Your ass ain't finna make it. And he was just all into the rap game, just standing over there, just all this hip. I walked up to him, I said, Lord, please let this boy just sound like he got something. So he had a name badge on, name, name Bill. So I said, Bill, what's happening? He said, no, Mr. Harvey, I want you to call me my rap name. I said, what is that? They call me Lunatic. I said, okay, Lunatic. He said, no, but I want you to call me Tick. I said, man, if this boy could just quit shaking in front of these white people, I don't know it, stop. So I said, okay, Tick, here's the question. <laughs> Name a word or phrase that begins with pork. He said, I got this, Mr. Harvey. I said, what is it? He said, cupine. Excuse me, what did you say? He said, Cupine. I was in the flow for 10 minutes. They had to quit taping. I couldn't breathe. I'm laughing so hard, I can't breathe. I know this stupid bastard don't think the word is pork Cupine. So I get up, I finally get through laughing. He's standing there, he looking at me like I ain't shit. What you laughing at, Mr. Harvey? It's probably gonna be number one. <laughs> Boy, number one. I bet you all the money I got saved, not only is it not gonna be number one, this shit ain't finna be on the board. He said, well, go on, flip it over there. I said, all right, coupon. <laughs> and everyone looked at me and said, oh, hell no. coming to the few this fall. <laughs> I tell you something else too, man. I wrote a book. Act like a lady, think like a man. got turned into the number one movie in the country. I'm trying to tell you, God, a cold piece of work, boy. I wrote the book originally for my daughters, because you know, they were dating. I got twins and I got a girl that was a daughter that was at Spelman, so you know, they was, and I got another one that's 15, so I wrote it for my daughters, because they was just coming home with these dudes, and I was just shooting their ass down. You know, just like, cute pine. I was just uh, shooting it. <laughs> and so, I wrote it for my daughters, right? And I really, didn't, I really didn't think the book would do what it did. You know, I didn't know that three million copies later that this book would be was just crazy. And my daughters, what sparked me was dating this guy, and I just kept, I told her, I said, he ain't shit. 
They said, Dad, why do you say that about everybody coming to the house? Because he ain't shit. See, what you want me to tell you? I've been 25. I've been 27. Every man that's got a daughter, you know where you was at that age. When you meet a boy and he ain't shit, you can't have my daughter and you ain't shit. You're not getting her. I keep her my damn self. I've been taking care of him all my life. I wish I would hand your ass to my daughter and you ain't shit. Get your monkey ass out of here. I had one dude come to the house. I, he said, Mr. Harvey, I said, look, man, I really don't think it's going to work out between you and my daughter. He said, well, Mr. Harvey, I think that's really up to your daughter. I said, did you hear what the fuck I just said? I said, you got to get away from my daughter. He said, well, Mr. Harvey, see what the I said, hey, hey, boy, hey, let's stop all this goddamn conversation. This is my house. I said, motherfucker, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I said, listen to me. Let me help you understand how serious I am about these daughters of mine. I have some friends in Cleveland that have never fully developed. They're in their 50s. But for a dime bag of weed and a bottle of rose, they'll come down here and kill you and everybody in your fucking family. Now, if you don't want the mommy and shit to be dead, get the fuck out of here. He said, Mr. Harvey, it was a pleasure meeting you, sir. <laughs> and see, one of the main things about women, your problem is you don't know how to pick a man. If you don't have a good man, it's not the man's fault. You pick the wrong damn man. You know, you have a choice in this. You have the say-so. If a man ain't shit and you pick him, that's your damn fault. He tells you along the way he ain't shit. See, because I'm going to tell you something that I didn't write in the book that I wish I had. Here's a fact. Let me tell you something, ladies. Every man can change and every man will change. But there's only one woman that we going to change for. The rest of y'all just get whatever the fuck it is. If we ain't coming by every day, God damn it, we ain't coming by every day. If we just coming by late at night, hit it and go home, we just coming by late at night, hit it and go home. Well, I don't like it that way. Well, that's all the fuck I'm giving you, cause you ain't the one. See, if you ain't, if your man ain't making sacrifices and, 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 and going out their way for you, it's cause you ain't the one. Just listen to me. Don't get quiet on me now. You ain't the one. What you tripping for? Just go get you somebody else. See, but you see, you, you pick me and you don't know where. Number one question women always ask me, Steve, where can I find a good man? You can find him anywhere. When the right one come along, he gonna walk up to you. You ain't gonna have to do nothing. But you gotta stop all this in the meantime dating though. That old, I'm going to just see him because I want to be held and I'm tired of not going out. Okay, keep on. When Mr. Wright see you and you over there with Mr. Wrong, he can't move on you. You over there with that bullshit. The real deal, been watching you for months. You keep eating lunch with that asshole. He married. You having lunch with him. Mr. Wright looking at you, but he can't move because the space is occupied. Yeah, see, that's how it works. Then I heard another lady talking about, well, I'm just going, I'm going to wait on a save man. You know how long you're going to be waiting? <laughs> a save man? What at? Just find you a good man. Get you a righteous man. Get you a man, love God, willing to go to church with you every now and then and build a life with you. Treat you and them kids right. Get you a good-ass man like that. I'm going I'm to find me a man up at the church. Okay. Go up there if you want to. It ain't just the men that's up there. Okay. I'm going to get me a man that sang in the choir. Careful. Careful. Watch the choir. Ain't but one choir 
that you can pick a solid man out of, guaranteed to be a solid man. That's the male quartet. All them men, they ain't before them. They solid, just solid ass men. On all that old fancy swaying and clapping. I know the Lord, I know the Lord, I know he will, he will. I know the Lord, I know the Lord, I know he will, he will. Because I know that Jesus is right. Oh, there he's all right, he's all right. I know the Lord, I know the Lord, I know the Lord, I know the Lord, I know the Lord. Said he's all right, he's all right. <laughs> That's the only way. You start picking in that other choir. Watch yourself. If the man you want is in the choir and he clapping and it look like this. <laughs> if he double and triple clapping, that ain't your man. See, when they get in the spirit, real men, you can always tell, they just look like they solid. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Fist be balled up. Thank you. Because they stay ready. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. If you look up there, and when your man praise him, his palms is showing, and they turn to the side, and they going in a circle motion right there. Careful, that ain't your man. See, listen to me. There are things men do, and there are things men just don't do. We got rules. There are rules to manhood. And look at me, real men, do not do this. Listen to me, ladies. If your man is talking to you, and he take his hand and open it, and while he talking, he lay it on his chest. <laughs> that ain't your man. If when your man is talking, and you hear this noise, you know, the other day, when I was at, I had a... I don't know, what the fuck did he just do? Yes, you know, the other day when he was, and he, did, and that motherfucker, did he just taste himself? Do you know how sweet you got to be to taste yourself? That ain't your man! So I know we, we're hitting a little nerve right here, so this just the last one. This the last one, because I see right now you kind of, li listen to me. Listen to me. If you outside with your man and, <laughs> and something frightens him, and when he gets scared, he break out running, and when he run, his elbows is touching in the back. If he look like Leroy on fame, that ain't your man. <laughs> so
See, a lot of people ask me all the time, Steve, where you get this stuff from? I don't make none of this up. I just report the news. I just say what you've been thinking, what you got job, you're climbing the corporate ladder, you're, on, you're trying to be something. You can't say what I say. I've done 27 years saying this here type of stuff. <laughs> See, I had to have a sense of humor when I was young, because I come from a big family. It wasn't really big, I had an immediate family. I had two brothers and two sisters. And my, my oldest brother, when well, he passed, and my boy Heavy, he, he was something else, man. And my other brother taught me how to drive. All the stuff I miss a dude, but he, he ain't even had to go, man. He just drank and, man, I miss my dude. That boy was something else, but who we are, yeah. But uh, when we first moved to Cleveland, we lived over a liquor store. And then we moved into this house and it was a two-family house, and we live upstairs, and the lady owned the house, she stayed downstairs. And it was me and my two brothers. We was in a two-bedroom with an attic. And me and my two brothers was in one bedroom, and my two sisters was upstairs in the attic, and my mom and daddy had the other bedroom. So it was cool until my sisters got married. They went off and had kids. And one of them had four kids, and the other one had three kids. And so my daddy let me move upstairs to the attic, which I thought was an upgrade. I, I'm going to get my own room. I'm going to spread my toys and shit out. I got Lincoln Logs, Hot Wheel. I'm going to spread all this shit out. What I did not know was how hot that goddamn attic was. That was a fucking death sentence. The worst shit ever happened to me. You be laying me so motherfucking hot, I was breathing with my mouth open. I was up in there, some bitch about to die. I got the windows open, mosquitoes just tagging my ass. And then I holler downstairs, mommy, it's hot up here. And then they give you that bullshit advice. Just be still. Be still. Be still, I'm already in a fucking coma. I can't be no more still. So my mom and daddy had the fan downstairs with them. We ain't had no air conditioner. So we had a fan. And so they got the old one and they gave me the old one. Well, the old one ain't had no grill on it. And it ain't have but one blade left. So this motherfucker just went by every now and then. I'm laying right up against the fucking thing, just waiting on that occasional draft to come through that. What the fuck gave me this ragged ass? Oof. Oof. I'm just trying to catch. Ha, there's a breeze. There's a breeze. Oof. Wait, Steve, there's a blow. Catch it. Catch it. Open your mouth. Oof. Ha. Ha. Woo. Woo. And then I fell asleep one time and leaned into it. That goddamn blade went across there. 16 stitches. I hated that fucking attic. And then my sisters, they got divorced at the same time. My daddy let their ass move back to the house. Now I got to go back out. I got to leave the attic. I'm back downstairs with my brothers. Now, now listen to this. We in the attic, two sisters. One of them got four kids, that's six. Other one got three, that's nine. Me and my two brothers, that's 12. My mom and daddy, that's 14. We got one bathroom. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What was that bullshit judgmental moment? You just said, woo, like I was the only one who grew up with one fucking bathroom. See, what you're not gonna do is cause your ass all of a sudden got the money to come to Las Vegas. Go sit up here and act like you had more than one bathroom in that raggedy fucking house of yours. Regular shitty ass project living people. Fast y'all from the project. When you see multiple bathrooms in the fucking project. <laughs> now, 
But like I said, we had one bathroom. That's what I thought. And when you got one bathroom and you young, you way down the line. You take a long time to get in the bathroom. And I love going to the bathroom because I love taking a bath. And see, bathing for me wasn't just a bath. It was an adventure. <laughs> I wasn't in there bathing. I was scuba diving. <laughs> I was in Aruba. I was swimming on the barrier reefs. I loved taking them. Man, my favorite bath was a bubble bath. Well, <laughs> wasn't really a bubble bath. It was a detergent bath. Okay, I see you with me now. Now, now we right here now. You remember that detergent bath, don't you? That's damn soap powder. Soap powder. Now, see, it's a technique to taking a soap powder bath. See, you can't just sprinkle that shit around there anywhere. Uh-uh. You got to take that soap powder and go right over there where that water go right down there. And you got to shake it right there. And right after that, God damn it, you got to swish it. You got to swish it. You have got to dissolve these damn crystals. This is critical. This is some critical ass information. You have got to dissolve them crystals. Because let me tell you something. If you don't dissolve them crystals, they will find their way up into places on you you never knew you had. You ever been to the beach? Been sitting there letting the waves wash up on you? You get home, you be finding sand in your ass for two weeks? You ever just picked up your balls and just sand all of it? Ladies, you ever picked up your breasts and just be sand up on that some bitch? Huh? That's what that detergent do. It get in your ass if you don't squish it. Now, I discovered this when I was nine. I had took a detergent bath and I did not swish. I'm in school the next day and I'm walking and I can't, mm, I cannot understand what, what the fuck is going, this is bullshit. God damn. Man, my ass is hot. What the fuck? I didn't know what the fuck? Jesus! And so, I, I got in class, and I'm sitting there. And it just so happened that day, the teacher had an oral exam. So she called me up to the board. She said, little Stevie, come up to the board. And I got up to the board. Now, this goddamn detergent, the melted, and I'm just digging in front of everybody. I don't give a shit who looking. I'm digging in my ass. I'm trying to pick shit out my, I don't know what the fuck. What the fuck is? My ass is on fire. So the teacher said, little Stevie, what are you doing? I said, God damn it, I don't know. I, my ass is on fire. And so she said, if you don't stop doing that, I'm gonna send you home. Well, God damn it, let's go. I got to go show my mama this shit because I don't know what the fuck is going on. And my mama used Oxidol. Had them blue bleaching crystals and one of them bleaching crystals got caught on the slit of the tip of my wee-wee. That motherfucker was on fire.
I want you all to remember this. Always, always encourage your kids. I don't care how absurd the idea is when they come in the house, encourage your children. You have no idea who God birthed into this world by you. You don't even know, especially single mothers. You struggle so hard, you want to raise your kids. It's such a thankless job. But single mothers, keep on raising them kids because you don't know who you gave birth to. Barack Obama never knew his daddy. He the president of the United States. I don't care what idea they come in the house with. My son that came in there with the stupidest shit, I don't be a big time wrestler. Okay, motherfucker, went and bought him a wrestling belt. I know gonna fuck well, I ain't finna let him be no goddamn wrestler. Shit, all this money I'm putting into your ass, you jumping off back of the couch and shit. Get your black ass down off that fucking couch. And see, uh, I was fortunate because my father was always my biggest supporter. My daddy, man, really surprised me one day because uh, I had a teacher in the sixth grade and we had been out on summer vacation and when we came back the first day of school, her assignment was write on a piece of paper what you want to be. So I wrote on my paper, I want to be on TV. Shit I didn't know. Ain't nobody told me I couldn't. Had no adult came along and crushed me. I was nine, I'm a kid. I didn't know you couldn't be shit. I thought you could be whatever you wanted to be. Ain't nobody never mashed it. So she collects all the papers and she call your name, you stand up and she tell everybody what you want to be. She said, little Bobby want to be a football player. Little Terry wants to be a doctor. Look here, uh, Sheila wants to be a nurse. Willie, Willie wants to be a doctor. And I went, Willie want to be a doctor? <laughs> Who buying into this bullshit right here? <laughs> Willie can't even read. You know the prescriptions he gonna be writing that's fucked up. It's gonna be a lot of sick ass people. So she called everybody name but mine. She got to mine, she said, little Stevie, stand up. So I stood up and she said, come up to the front of the class. And I'm thinking to myself, this is a gold star moment. I'm finna go up here cause my answer was better than all the rest of these kids. I'm finna go up here and give me a gold star. So I wore a lot of hand-me-down clothes. So my pants was wrapped around twice had a belt on, shirt was sloppy looking. You know, kids be laughing and shit, but you know, fuck y'all, I got a gold star. You kiss my ass. And I'm walking up there, and I was real skinny, and I was curved like that, I walked like this. They used to call me tater chip. So they laughing on the way up there, I'm going to myself, laugh if you want to, gonna get a goddamn gold star today, play a hating ass bastard. So I get up there in front of the class. She said, little Stevie, what did you write on your paper? I said, I want to be on TV. She said, why did you write that on your paper? I said, because that was our assignment for today. She said, but why would you write something like that on the paper? I could tell by her tone. I said, this some bullshit right here. This ain't the gold star moment I thought it was. This is some bullshit. So she said, do you know anybody on TV? I said, no ma'am. Have you ever seen anybody on TV? I said, but Bill Cosby is on TV. He is on I Spy. And that's why I say I won't be on TV. But do you know Bill Cosby? No ma'am. You know anybody in this school on TV? No, ma'am. You know anybody in your neighborhood on TV? I said, this dream-killing heifer. 
I said, no, ma'am. She said, well, I'm going to pin this note on you, and you're going to wear it home, and I'm going to call your mother and tell her you up at this school being a little Mr. Smart Alec. I said, ain't that a bitch? Motherfucker, you asked me to write this shit on the paper. I just said that to myself. You know, you, you couldn't say no shit like that back then. So she pins this note on me. And she done called my mama, so I can't take it off. I walk in the house, my mama waiting on me. What is that pin on your coat, mister? I said, I know you know. I didn't say that to her, though. I just said. She snatched it off. The teacher called me. Said you're being a Mr. Smart Pants. What did you write on the paper? I said, she asked us what we wanted to be, and I wrote, I want to be on TV. She said, what you write that on the paper for? I said, I'll be damned. <laughs> My mama is a dream killer, too. <laughs> this is some bullshit right here. I said, well, mama, that's what I want to be. She said, well, that ain't what you're supposed to put on your paper. She said, I'm telling your daddy when he get home. And I went, okay, now nah, this is really fucked up now nah, because this ain't nothing but an ass whooping when he get here because my daddy was the enforcer in the family. When he came on, instant ass whooping, no questions asked. This how we do it, we roll it. So I'm sitting on steps waiting on him. He come in the house, I go to the store, get his paper. He take a bath, he get through eating. He called me in there. He said, boy, what does your mama say you got a note pen on you at school for? I, she said, tell him, tell him what you wrote on your paper. I said, I want to be on TV. He said, what you write that on paper for? I said, because that's what the teacher asked me. She said, Slick, just whoop him, because he ain't got no business writing that stuff on the paper. He said, what you put on the paper, boy? I said, I want to be on TV. He said, well, what's wrong with that? I said, uh-oh, a reprieve from the governor. This could be a stay of execution. So I sat up there, I said, that's what I want. She said, he said, boy, he said, well, Bill, this boy can be on TV if he want to. No, he can't, Slick. He got to write what that teacher said, put on paper. He said, boy, go on in your room. I'm coming in there. I said, okay, well, I'm getting the ass whooping anyway. So he came in the room. I started unbuttoning my pants. He said, hold on, boy. He said, what she want you to write on that paper? I said, like a policeman or something? He said, well, take a piece of paper out, put that on paper. He said, now take that piece of paper, I won't be on TV, and put it in your top drawer. Take that down there and give it to that dream killing heifer. <laughs> and you, what I want you to do is every morning before you go to school, I want you to read that paper. And every night before you go to bed, I want you to read that paper. If you, if you turn your TV on five days a week, all because my father just believed in me. He just gave me that one little moment I needed. Because, see, at my house, you had to, you had to kind of pay attention because I love my daddy, man. My daddy used to let me shave with him in the morning before I went to school. And I shaved with my daddy all the time. And he built me this little box to stand up on so I could shave next to him. And he put on shaving cream and he put a razor on his face, and he let me put the shaving cream on, and I had a popsicle stick, and I'd be shaving with him. I did that every morning before I went to school. I got up with my daddy and shaved in the mirror with my daddy. Well, my daddy would, would leave and go to work. I would stay on the box in front of that mirror. Now, we had an old fucked up mirror now. You know that mirror would be in them houses that you grew up in, had all the brown shit on it and it had a lot of cracks in it. It wasn't but one little space on it where you could see yourself. You had to look at your face in sections. So it had a lot of spots on it. So I would wait till he leave. Every morning, I would stay on that stool for an hour, just looking in that mirror, just clowning. 
Make a faith. Look surprised. Ooh. Look more surprised. Ooh. Look crazy. Oh, yeah. I'm fucking right here. See, I never knew that I was building a muscle that was going to serve me later on in life. That what I was really going to be, I was working on back then. And every morning, my mother used to come in there, Steve, get out of that box. You're going to be late for school. Every morning, she come in there. So one day, I'm watching the Ed Sullivan Show. And so it was called the Ed Sullivan Show because his name was Ed Sullivan. So I said, shit, I got to get me a TV show name. And I kid you not, at nine years old, I had the Steve Harvey Show at nine. Uh, and so I'm in there just clowning. So one night I'm watching Ed Sullivan, and he went to a commercial break, and he said, we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. So I went, oh, shit. I need a sponsor for the Steve Harvey Show. So I'm in the mirror Monday morning, and I'm doing my thing. And I said, hey, folks, listen, we'll be right back with Mo of the Steve Harvey Show. So I start looking around the bathroom, because I got to give me a sponsor. So I look on the back of the toilet. My mama kept all her stuff on the towel on the back of the toilet. And she had this deodorant that came in a jar. And it, yeah, it was a cream deodorant. You dip your finger in it, put it on like that. The deodorant was called Tussle. So I decided that Tussie was going to be the sponsor of the Steve Harvey show. Only problem is I'm nine. I only know one word that's spelled like that. So I thought the deodorant was Tussie. So I grabbed the jar of Tussie and I'm writing me a jingle. Tussie, I like Tussie. Everybody that I know like to see. I put some to see right here. I put some to see right there. I put some to see on me. Summer everywhere. I like to see. I'm just smearing this shit on me. I ain't got no shirt on. I'm doing the to see. Now, while I'm doing the jingle, my mama came in there to tell me to go to school. Now, my mama can't hear that good. So, she think I'm saying something else. And I'm just saying it, tussie. Come on, tussie. Who in here don't like to get tussie? I put some tussie right here. I put some tussie right there. So now my mama reaches up on the back of that door and there was a hot water bottle that hung up there all the time, had a hose on it. I never really knew what that hot water bottle was for. I was just told, never touch that hot water bottle. And it smelled like vinegar, so I didn't want to play with it. So I just stayed away from the son bitch. I did not have no idea what the shit was for. She got that hot water bottle down, and she started wrapping the cord around her hand. I don't see none of this shit. I got my shirt off to see. Come on, to see. All of a sudden, she took that goddamn cord across my back. Whoosh. I said, God the fuck? <laughs> she said, I know you ain't in here singing the pussy song. You black bastard, we Christians. We don't say about pussy in this house. And I'm sitting up here trying to tell them it ain't pussy. I'm sad pussy. It's the goddamn deodorant, mama. Stop beating my ass. It's just pussy. I said, fuck, man. I don't want pussy sponsoring this show no fucking more. I started wiping that shit up. Man, fuck pussy. I'm Steve Harvey. Thank y'all. <laughs>
Steve Hummer. One final word for your fans, man. One final word. Thank you all for supporting me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you all for making my dreams come true. You can't be famous without people. Really? Really? Been dreading this moment, man. Because I didn't know what to say. I just want to say thank you. God has given me a life far beyond anything I ever dreamed about. God is, man. God, something else, man. I want to thank my partner, Rashawn McDonald, who's been with me 20-some years. I want to thank my bodyguard, Boomerang. Has been with me longer than anybody else. Stood next to me for 25 years. I thank JT, Terrence, everybody that tours with me. I want to thank Marjorie for for skyrocketing my life. I wasn't doing good. So you came along, girl. Now show sure thank you. Uh -huh. We love you, <laughs> 27 years is a long time to do something you love to do. Bishop Jakes, T.D. Jakes told me Heard him in a sermon one time say, I would hate to die and never do the thing I was born to do. Amen. Man, God let me do it. He let me do it. I, just so much, man. I'm, I'm not a perfect Christian, you dig? But my life has gotten to this point. Somebody tweeted me and said, your career is what you're paid for. Your calling is what you made for. God has positioned me just this way, to be just like I am, to say what I say, how I say it, and I'm just a living witness that you can be an imperfect soldier and still be in the army fighting for God Almighty. Don't you think you got to be perfect? Because I ain't. Thank y'all for 27 years. I love you. Thank you so much.
Steve Paul.